consumers want to know the facts about the products they buy. But America's agriculture landscape is not easy to navigate. Between different companies, scientific advancement, government regulations, advertising campaigns, and an unhealthy amount of myth and misconception, anyone would be hard-pressed to make sense of it. That's where real ag comes in. From the producers who make your food to the store where you buy the final product and everything in between, this is real ag. There are many dangers that farmers need to be aware of when working on their farms. From working in a grain silo to being aware of the large machinery used in their operation, there are several ways that farming can become a hazardous operation. We will look at farm safety in Kansas as we visit with farmers and talk with the Kansas Farm Bureau on this episode of Real Ag. Production of Real Ag is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from the Kansas Soybean Commission. The Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by farmers. Agriculture is listed as one of the most hazardous industries in Kansas, according to the Kansas Department of Health and Environment. Each year in the United States alone, more than 700 farmers and ranchers die from work-related accidents, making farming one of the most dangerous occupations in the country. 120,000 agriculture workers suffered work-related, disabling injuries and an estimated 104 children are killed annually in farm accidents. How can incidents like these be prevented? And what are the biggest concerns when it comes to farm safety? Farmers need to watch out about a whole variety of things, from slips, trips, and falls, to animal safety. They work in inclement weather, whether it be cold or hot conditions. They um, work around machinery that moves incredibly quickly just all sorts of things that farmers need to worry about. Farm safety is one of those topics that everybody knows it, it's just not always in the forefront of your mind. And so I think farm safety is very important. I grew up on a farm, my dad was always very careful about where we were and what we were doing because he didn't want an accident to happen. Production agriculture in, in that arena of farming uh, a lot of mechanical, physical activity is taking place. And whenever we have mechanical, physical activity taking place, there's room for danger. As equipment has gotten larger, as planting and harvesting windows uh, have become smaller, we, we, we go faster, you know, um, we, we, we're less likely to look out for what's going on around us. We're, we're trying to cover more ground. And farm safety just continues to be an absolutely critical thing that, that we need to remind folks uh, about on the farm. And it, you know, it's, it's not just equipment, it's animals, it's, it's so many different things um, that we have to, to remind ourselves about. Most farmers probably underestimate the risk on a farm. I mean, we always tell ourselves to watch out for PTOs, watch out for augers. And I know on our farm, we've had a couple of accidents that were not as serious as they could have been, but they could have been pretty serious. And normally what happens is you're trying to do things in a hurry. You're really tired in harvest. Everyone's head's not quite there. And so on our, on our farm, we try to make sure that when we get into those periods of high stress, high exhaustion, for a better word, that guys are really thinking about the potential dangers and you look out for each other. And if you see someone doing something they shouldn't be doing, you let them know. Farmers live and work typically in the same location. And many times they have multiple generations living and working in the same general location. So it's hard to keep youngsters out of danger areas unless they have a nice fenced in area specifically for that. So the younger kids typically are extra riders on tractors. Riding extra is something that all kids seem to want to do. And it's hard for a parent or grandparent to say no when it's very dangerous activity. Lots of times that, that, that is the cause of the uh, fatality for the younger people on the farm. And farming is an occupation that people don't retire from. It's in their blood it, or in their DNA. Um, they, they live to farm. Um, many farmers, my grandma's like that, she did not stop farming until she could no longer farm two weeks before she passed. Um, it keeps them getting up in the morning. So that's why we have 
ages clear up to 97. Agriculture is one of the largest industries in the world. In the U.S. alone, it accounts for 10.3% of total employment, around 19.7 million jobs. Farming is also one of the deadliest and most hazardous professions in the world as well. Ranking alongside construction and mining, agriculture is one of the most dangerous industries. All over the world, at least 170,000 agriculture workers are fatally injured every year. In the U.S., about 60 to 70 farmers per 100,000 are killed every year. About 33% of the farming population in the United States experience non-fatal injuries, with 3% of those accidents resulting in permanent disability. Most deaths are the result of transportation accidents, such as trailers overturning. Do people working in the agriculture industries in Kansas believe farming is a dangerous profession? I think farming is probably not any more dangerous than, let's say, working in a factory or around anything with a machine. I think farms need to be cognizant of safety procedures, whether it's do we have a plan when we go into grain bins, do we have a plan when we're working around machinery, and not be cavalier about safety. You know, I think we can get away with some stuff on our farms that obviously you couldn't in factories because we don't have OSHA coming out here. Guys need to really be paying attention to safety and and take a job that has potential to be dangerous, look at potential problems, and try to either avoid them or take the steps to make them safer. We're, we're not naturally inherently trained in how to be around animals and equipment. Um, I think, I'll, I'll use myself as an example. Growing up, I, I had the great, best life possible growing up. Grew up with all kinds of livestock, grew up on a farm, and I wanted nothing more than to be involved in every aspect of that. Uh, everything from climbing in the pens with the pigs to, to chasing the equipment when it went through the yard, headed out to the field on my little pedal tractor thinking I was gonna catch up and go out and help them harvest a corn crop. That was me. Uh, my mother used to love to tell those stories. But in every case, I also remember the scolding that I got because I wasn't supposed to be on that pedal tractor going out to the field. I wasn't supposed to climb into that pen with those pigs. And, and, and at now the tender age of my late 50s, I still remember those vividly. Because of that, we pass that on to our children uh, to make sure that they learn. So I would not call it inherently dangerous. Um, I think I probably every day run a bigger risk of having an automobile accident that's gonna injure me than I do an on the farm accident. I, I, I think that our society is, is dangerous because of all the stuff around us. For me, no, but we do have to train. We, we, we do have to teach each generation. We have to take the time with our employees uh, to show them how to do things properly and, and how to make sure that they don't create uh, an unsafe situation for them or somebody around them. I, I kind of want to say, yes, farming is a dangerous operation or a, a dangerous profession, but at the same time, if my kids were part of another family business that involved heavy machinery, equipment, travel, movement between fields, I would still probably remind my kids to be safe and be aware and try and be as proactive as possible in keeping them safe. It, it's one of the more dangerous professions in terms of the actual mechanical farming aspects uh, of, uh, of a career. It's, it, it ranks up there pretty high. It is a sixth dangerous occupation in the United States, agriculture and farming. I have been here since 2000 and when I first started, the number of farm fatalities in some years was close to or just right over 30. In the last several years, our numbers have been way down. We've been down to 10 and below. Last year we were at three. This year so far we have three farm fatalities. I would say that due to several reasons, farming fatalities have decreased over the last 20 years. I would say non-fatal would be slips, trips, and falls. Uh, fatal injuries would include equipment, tractor rollovers, um, fires, um, electrocution, grain, and animals. One of the leading causes of injuries and death for agricultural workers is tractor accidents, according to the National Safety Council. Common tractor accidents include rollovers, entanglements, and tractors running over people. 
Other types of dangers farmers face include those related to grain bins, the use of dangerous chemicals, falling farm structures, and dangers related to the use of other equipment. What do the people who work in agriculture in Kansas see as some of the types of dangers they face? Just like everyone else, farmers need to watch, uh, be aware of their surroundings and keep an eye out for things, like in the case of animals. Animals can be very unpredictable. Even though they may seem tame, things may happen that make them um, not, not so friendly. So farmers need to watch out for animals. They need to watch out for machine safety. The machines are quick. They are way quicker than we are. And sometimes we feel immortal. Like I've done this 500 times. I'm just doing this again. But we need to remember to stop, slow down, think about things, and just be prepared for what could happen. The equipment is getting larger. <laughs> that, that's certainly a trend we're seeing. Not only is the equipment getting larger, it, it is getting safer, but it's getting faster too. And, and perhaps if you're in a rural community, everybody's used to, you know, times of the year when you've got to watch out for those things, but the danger always exists of, of, uh, of accidents happening in that regard. Equipment does move. When we talk about PTOs or power takeoffs, and that's the shaft that comes out of the rear end of the, the combine and then powers uh, another piece of equipment behind it. Uh, take a lot of caution there because that thing's moving, you know, at a very rapid speed and even a loose fitting piece of fabric, if it's a loose uh, fitting shirt or even loose fitting jeans, it can very quickly be entangled in that PTO and then obviously uh, spin around thousands of, you know, times per revolutions per minute. And that can do very serious damage and, and often is uh, lethal. So farmers are, are and having to handle large volumes of, of chemical and deal with large equipment. There are a number of safety protocols in place and, and, and often a, a certain level of certification may be needed for certain chemicals or certain treatments, certain applications. But uh, years ago, there were maybe a handful of, of herbicides and, and things that were of concern. Uh, and you also had, you know, you have things like anhydrous ammonia, fertilizer that, that, that we've known safety issues with that for years. Chemical burns, whether we're talking fuel or whether we're talking paint thinner or we're talking, you know, some type of brake cleaner. Uh, there's other chemicals and, you know, when we talk about spraying pesticides and herbicides and fungicides over our field, there are certain restrict, restricted use pesticides where you have to have additional levels of training and certificates in order to apply that as a, a producer. There are even some uh, very restricted uh, use chemicals that you have to have a professional applicator actually apply in your fields. Some of those are uh, a waiting period. You can't enter that field if it's been sprayed within a certain matter of hours or even some days. Um, obviously, if you get a chemical on your body, in your eyes, there's protocols, washing that out, flushing it out, going in and seeking medical attention as quickly as you can. Those are some pretty common ones. I think it's really important that everybody is cognizant of how dangerous anhydrous can be. When you really stop and see the pictures of people who have lost their eyesight or have damaged eyes or damaged lungs or something along the lines because of anhydrous burn, that makes you very cognizant of those types of things. And so I try to stop and think through that as I am talking to kids or to youth, or actually we've done some that have been family um, farm safety days. And, you know, we need everybody to be cognizant of what is an, in an anhydrous tank? Why do we not mess with the valves on anhydrous tanks? You know, everybody understand that anhydrous is attracted to water and any surface on your body that has water, it's gonna be attracted to. And one of the things I always teach kids when we're doing anhydrous safety is, what is the answer for anhydrous? And the answer always is water, water, water. And so as we're talking through this throughout the 20 minutes or however long we spend, talking about anhydrous and showing how quickly it can freeze things like flowers or onions and how they shatter and break because they've had all the water pulled out of them that we repeat this throughout the time. So hopefully at the very end, if I say, what do we do for anhydrous? Everyone says water, 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 because we know that that's part of the answer. Other things may have to do with, uh, you know, on farm grain storage and, you know, grain bin safety and, and things like that are, are always come to mind because the, there's, there's inevitably about every year there, there's tragedy somewhere around the U.S. through people being uh, you know, basically sucked in, into an air pocket in a grain bin as they're trying to un, uh, facilitate unloading the bin or something. Basically, if the grain starts moving, let's say it collapses or there's a bridge uh, and, and it collapses, that it could be 
less than 10 seconds before an adult is fully consumed in the grain. And the grain, like I said, is so heavy and so dense that it's gonna take more force than any of us have to pull somebody out. You can't just walk up and pull somebody out of grain. You have to have specialized equipment, um, safety tubes that go down around them, and then the, the grain has to be taken out of the, the tube, whether it's vacuumed out or shoveled out or scooped out by their hands in a frantic hurry to get that person. If, if you're trapped up to, say, your waist, you're gonna need help getting out. If you're trapped up to your chest, you're gonna need help quickly getting out. If you're trapped over your head, you're, you're gonna be in real danger. Grain is way heavier than the normal person, the normal consumer would ever realize. When you're around a lot of grain and it starts moving, there could be serious consequences. So grain safety is also something that farmers have to worry about. I think one that often gets overlooked, again, going back to sunburns. We, we're outside uh, oftentimes 12, 14 hours a day. Certainly as we talk about June, July, August, people know the dog days of summer. But even other times throughout the year, if, if it's a sunny day and we're not putting sunscreen on, a melanoma and, and skin cancer is very prom, uh, prevalent and, and common in agriculture and the producers. And again, it's just basic. Uh, wear a long sleeve shirt, wear a ball cap if you know your hairline's receding, be sure to put sunscreen on your ears and in your nose, etc., just to take some care of those uh, basic precautions. It is estimated that 80% of farm accidents are avoidable and the result of carelessness or failure to properly deal with hazards safely. Lack of training or improper training can result in many incidents on the farm, especially when dealing with large machinery and hazardous chemicals. With all the potential dangers on and around the farm, how can farmers remain safe and prevent accidents from happening? I think universities do a great job of, of helping with farm safety training. I think the, the grain groups, the, the, the grower associations do that, the farm bureaus of the world. I, I think there are a lot of resources out there. What I think farmers need to do is to be reminded to do that. At Servitech, we've got 75 agronomists and, and right now 25 interns traveling across nine states in pickups with four wheelers in the back. Safety is on the top of mind for me every day. We do defensive driving training every year with our employees. We do uh, safety training on how to operate four wheelers safely. It can be so dangerous. Trying to make up time and I'm on a four wheeler and boy, I can accelerate quickly and get across the field. But what about a washout that I didn't see? What about a fence that's partially pushed down? Coming to a four way stop in a rural part of the country and the corn is eight feet tall. Slow down, use your blinker. Uh, all those things are just simple things that we can remind our folks to use to keep them safe and to keep those around them safe as well. So local farmers, I think, make an effort to first of all, if someone new comes into the operation, to be trained and, and to be provided the education on safe for, uh, operation of equipment. On a farm, you usually have a limited number of employees and it's usually family or close people you really need to pay very close attention to what's going on on the farm because there's a lot of big machinery and specialty machinery that can just reach out and grab you before you even know it you, you really got to be very careful if anybody's walking around the combine or when we're running and harvesting and things like that the combine stops uh, we're never like running and jumping in to join the combine shut the header off when you get close to it uh, if you're in the sprayer, just really checking your surroundings, making sure that you're not having two earbuds in so you're aware of people communicating with you, making sure you take the time and not get in a hurry and be aware of who's working with you. You know, working around equipment, always knowing where the other guy is if they're helping you hook it up, never move a tractor without walking around it or, or having an actual visual on the person helping you. Never go in a grain bin without somebody knowing you're there. We have the proper harnesses to climb up the grain legs and stuff like that. Communication's the number one, and within that communication is, you know, we use a lot of hand signaling to tell each other what we're doing when the machinery's on and loud and, and from a distance so that we can all understand you know, what's going on and how to be safe. How to handle livestock properly, having good facilities uh, to make sure that the animals and the people are, are safe. All of those are, are such a critical part of farm safety. I don't know how many times that I have told audiences, 
one seat, one rider, no exceptions. Now, lots of your enclosed cabs will have a buddy seat or a training seat. Well, that's an extra seat. So if there are two seats in there with seat belts, then you can have two people in the cab. My best advice is never ever to let anyone ride extra, whether it be an ATV, a tractor, a combine, a pickup truck. We need to think about what the possible consequences of those actions could be. Every year, we do hear in the news of, of incidents in the Kansas, in, in the state of Kansas, of f folks that have been, you know, killed with some kind of accident, whether it's a, a traffic accident or whether it's a, an accident involving the power takeoff shaft on, on a tractor. They do, they do occur. We've had many close calls on our family farm, uh, and I know that probably most farmers could say that. When you get the chance to be blessed with a close call that didn't result in a, in, in a tragedy, you learn from that. And you put into place guidelines and, and, and steps to take the next time so you don't put yourself in that, in that situation. Even non-farmers should have some understanding of farm safety when it comes to agriculture equipment on the roadways and when farm equipment is around non-farming populations. What are some risks non-farmers should be aware of when dealing with farm equipment on the roads? Like the danger of being a farmer, and, and especially in terms of their interaction with the, the general public, most of that risk, I'd probably say, is gonna fall when we're moving equipment down the road. You know, we have some really poor visibility behind some of our equipment. Now, we try to manage that. If we have a, let's say, an air seat or a grain cart where we can't see behind us, we have video cameras mounted on the back so we can see what's behind us. Even then, you know, like to say, a left-hand turn is pretty dangerous for a farmer. And I've had a couple of close calls where guys are, are flying by on your left-hand side when you're going to turn into a field. I think they need to understand why, let's say if a farmer is slowing down and he's moving and taking the entire lane, both lanes of the road, he's just trying to protect both that other, that other car driver and himself to say, look, I'm turning, don't pass me. And hopefully by doing that, you know, you can avoid a wreck. And I have seen throughout the years during those periods of seasonality, harvest time in Kansas is a good example of wheat. When we alert the community that we're going to have an extraordinary uh, volume of farm traffic on our roads and to thank them for their patience and their understanding and being careful so that we can avoid accidents. So if it's planting season, if it's harvest season, if there's equipment on the road, we need to um, slow down and take a minute. Sometimes what I will do, because I'm just like everybody else, travel roads that, that farm equipment is on and sometimes I get a little frustrated that uh, there's such a long line behind a piece of equipment. So what I like to do is to remind myself that I cannot provide all the food, fiber, fuel, sometimes phar pharmaceuticals that m my family needs. I cannot provide that. Somebody else is doing it and that's our farmers and ranchers. You know, we work with incredibly large equipment um, throughout the season. And a lot of times we have to get on roadways that we have to share you know, with, with the general public. And we don't like to be on those roadways um, because we know that the, the risk of, of accidents you know, is a real threat. And we try very, very hard to get from field to field as quickly and safely as possible. And sometimes that requires you know, using those public roadways. I guess one of the things that I would like non-farmers to know about, about farmers is we're not intentionally trying to make you late for work or late, make you late for an appointment. We're just trying to get to our next field as safely as possible. Though you may not always hear about them, farming accidents are very common, yet preventable much of the time. Farm accidents are at their peak in the June, July, and August seasons, which are the most active periods for crop production and harvest. Some procedures farmers can use to prevent as well as act when an accident does occur are to develop a safety checklist, have a farm safety and emergency plan, train all employees on the use of equipment and chemicals on the farm, and be aware of the types and causes of farming accidents. Any life that, that, that's impacted by, by an accident on the farm is one too many. Um, and so making sure that, that we teach kids how to properly drive equipment, making sure that we teach little ones not to go behind equipment, that we're with them, that they're not kind of in the yard by themselves and, and not being supervised. Even when you're, you're dead tired, 
even when you have those time crunches that we're still being very, very aware of staying safe. Things happen so quickly and it's things that we might know better to do and we still do it anyway and it'll catch us and get us in trouble. Education, awareness, I think with the internet and all that sort of thing where we can find out information at the drop of a hat that actually is helping folks stay aware of, of trends and things to look out for. Whether you're a farmer working on a combine or a motorist trying to pass a sprayer on the road, it is always important to remember the basics of farm safety. Being aware of your surroundings can help save you and others' lives and keep the number of incidents on the farm or the road to a minimum. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Real Ag on farm safety. As always, you can check out this and other episodes of Real Ag on SmokyHillsPBS.org. From the producers at Smoky Hills PBS, this has been Real Ag. Production of Real Ag is made possible in part by an underwriting grant from the Kansas Soybean Commission, the Soybean Checkoff, progress powered by farmers.